My mind was absolutely blown when the first game that I tested with Smart Access Memory was Forza Horizon 5, and I started seeing a 29% performance gain just by turning on Smart Access Memory. I can't tell you how many times I restarted the game, restarted my computer, ran the tests again. I even went ahead and, you know, recorded this so we could watch it in side by side to show you that, yeah, I'm really getting a 29% performance gain just by turning on Smart Access Memory. But what even is Smart Access Memory? Maybe you click this video and you have no idea. Well, if we pop into AMD's website, I went ahead and grabbed some little uh, screenshot things off of their website. First of all, what do you actually need to do this? Because unfortunately, you need certain hardware. Officially, you need an AMD 500 series motherboard, although I believe there might be some unofficial support onto some other motherboards, but I can't speak to having tested any of that personally. Now, certain Ryzen 3000 series processors seem to have been updated to be able to use this, but this, when it initially launched, was only compatible on AMD Ryzen 5000 series processors, and that's what I'm testing it on in this video. I am on a Ryzen 9 5950X with 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's 3600 uh, speeds and the timings are CL16. And again, you also need a certain uh, graphics hardware. We have the RX 6000 series graphics. And in this video, I'm just testing on the RX 6800 XT. This is the um, uh, tough model, Asus tough gaming model. Um, and I'm running it at its stock settings, which that model, I I think has a tiny factory overclock or something, but the stock settings for that card. So the only thing I'm touching is whether or not smart access memory is enabled or disabled. And again, they want certain software drivers and such uh, uh, in order for this to be compatible. Now, what is it actually doing? If my fat head was out of the way, ah, how it works. Uh, well, okay, guys, the basic idea, let me, I can probably make myself shrink here. Ah, the basic idea is that your your graphics card is talking to your CPU and there's communication happening there going through the PCIe bus. At least this is how I understand it. I'm, I, you know, I didn't, I, I'm, I didn't, I'm, I'm just a math teacher doing a tech channel as a hobby. Anyway, but they communicate through that. And in, in the past, it's always been limited to addressing 256 megabyte blocks of the GPU's memory at one time. And what smart access memory does is actually enable what's called resizable bar, which has been a PCIe feature for a while now, but AMD was the first one to really like push for actually activating this and using it. And what that allows is for it to communicate with the entire uh, GPU memory without limiting it to only talking to 256 megabytes at once. And so the idea here is that this should remove some bottlenecks in certain situations in certain games, and then they have these published uh, performance results. Uh, they didn't have Forza Horizon 5 on there, but they did for have Forza Horizon 4, where they were seeing they saw up to 15% results. And do notice the up to on all of these, right? Now, what games am I testing? Well, I didn't actually have any of these games installed on my computer, but what I do have is a number of games that have built-in graphics benchmarks because I wanted to be able to do really careful side-by-sides -side so we are capturing exactly the same thing. So I decided to go in with some stuff that has built-in side-by-sides. And as far as one of the next ones that I selected, um, well, actually, I mean, I did. first one I selected was Forza Horizon 5. I can get myself out of the way here. And I was also very interested in seeing if the resolution that we were running the game at affected the results. And it looks like it did. So we see massive gains, but you can see that the gain at 4K, if we're talking in terms of percentage, and by the way, my next graph will be percentages, but here's the frame rates, right? <laughs> and you can see the light blue color is Sam off, the darker color is Sam on. And then we can see the actual frame rate on this graph. I adjust it to percentages on the next screen. But the reason I wanted to look at the frame rate and not just the percentage gains is check this out. At 4K with Sam on, you're actually coming within almost an imperceptible difference of 1440p without Sam. That's insane to me. <laughs> 
And then when you kick Sam on at 1440p, that's where we saw that absolutely massive jump. And then even at 1080p, we jumped from 124 up to 161. I think in certain scenes on this benchmark at 1080p, I was also pushing up against the limits of my CPU. Um, uh, just, but for the most part, we were still GPU limited, but there was a little bit of CPU limit entering the equation here. Okay, now if we look at this in terms of percentages, this is where we see that at 4K, I was getting an almost 20% gain, which is a lot, that's, that's, it's huge. But then I was seeing a 29.1% gain at 1440p, and that pushed up to almost 30% at 1080p. That's absolutely nuts. So let's test out some more games and see if it's always this crazy. Well, what should I test? Well, one thing I noticed recently, at the, as of the time of filming, if you're watching this in the future, I guess it wouldn't be that recently. Eh, get out of the way here. Is that um, in the latest AMD drivers, 22.2.2, .2, one of the highlights of this driver set, oops, clicked the wrong thing, uh, was the addition of um, smart access memory optimizations. Well, um, I don't have a lot of these games installed, but I do have Cyberpunk 2077, which was listed down there, oops, at the bottom down here, where they were claiming up to 10% increase in performance at 1080p ultra settings. So I went ahead and tested out Cyberpunk 2077, and here's what we've got. So again, we got Sam off, Sam on, and at 4K, I saw almost no gain. By the way, I'm using the built-in benchmark tool that was added with Cyberpunk's 1.5 update. So that's the scene that we're testing here. And at 1440p, we did actually see a bit of a more noticeable performance jump. I'm not sure how much you'd notice it in actual gameplay, but it is actually showing up noticeably in the numbers. And at 1080p, we got even more of a frame rate bump. And if we look at that in terms of percentages, uh, then it's, you know, it's not, I, I didn't get the up to 10%. I got up to 7.4%. Although, how do you interpret up to? I'm sure there might be some scenes in the game where there could be a 10% uplift or maybe on a different GPU, right? I'm testing this on the RX 6800 XT. But again, at 1080p, we are seeing the largest gain, which is interesting to me once again, that it does seem to be scaling up in terms of frame rate. Okay, so what do I think of this? Cyberpunk isn't the like mind-blowing performance difference that we saw in Forza Horizon 5, but it's still a performance difference and it's a positive one and I like it. So let's go ahead and test out some other games. The next one I tested out was Total War Warhammer 3 and I used the Ultra preset and I used its built-in battle mode um, benchmark. I didn't use the campaign map, which is a whole other thing. And can I just comment that this game is way more demanding than it should be when you actually look at the visuals. They need to do some kind of optimization going on here. But anyway, that's a whole other story. You can tell that in this game, it is technically a performance increase. At least we didn't lose any performance. And while I would say that these are within the margin of error, I'll also say that it was actually a positive difference every time. So I would say that, I w that, that it does seem to be maybe helping the tiniest little bit. And if we look at it in terms of percentage gain, you know, we at least beat a 1%, you know, 1.3% percentage gain at 1080p. Uh, once again, though, this game, like, I, I should, this is not the point of this video, but like this game, Maybe at its lower presets makes sense, but uh, the ultra, like, you get the the unit models look kind of detailed and good, but the overall battle scene itself looked like something that you could have seen years ago and should be running better than it is. Let's go ahead and move on, though. Anyway, I, I decided to test out Horizon Zero Dawn, once again using the ultra preset, and once again, I saw the performance gains increase as we decreased resolution, which was interesting once again, that seems to be consistent. At 4K, we went from 75 average to 80 average. 1440p, we jumped from 134 up to 148, and 1080p going from 159 to 176. And we can again look at this in terms of a percentage gain, 
and we're seeing a 6.7% gain at 4K, a 10.5% gain at 1440p, and a 10.7% performance gain at 1080p. So hey guys, a 10% gain is really nothing to sneeze at. I mean, sometimes that's the difference between like a card and it's like super version or something like that. Like, I'll take it, man. <laughs> And let's finish out the tests with uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. And I this one doesn't have an ultra preset, but it does have a favor quality slider, and I slid it all the way to favor quality. And again, we're not seeing mind-blowing results like I did in Forza Horizon 5, but I'm once again seeing a positive result on every single uh, game I tested and it gets better the lower the resolution is. So at 4K, we're seeing a small small gain, bigger at 1440p, even bigger at 1080p. And if we look at that in terms of percentages, that's a 3.6% gain at 4K, 4.8% at 1440p, and an 8.9% gain at 1080p. So, um, like the other thing I wanted to check in with was, okay, I was able to test five games but other people could possibly test more. The folks over at Hardware Unboxed uh, seem to have the most free time in the tech industry or something, because they do the most thorough benchmarks that I've ever seen. And so to be clear, this slide is taken from Hardware Unboxed, and they did a video, I think about a year ago, testing out smart access memory in a massive number of games. And one reason I wanna do my video was to test it out because there's been a lot of driver updates. Like we saw the last driver update claimed massive performance optimizations to, to this. And by the way, I didn't test a lot of the same stuff they did, but, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is in there, and they were seeing a 6% performance jump at 1440p, and I believe mine was a 10.5% jump. So I'm not sure if that's just a difference between our testing hardware configurations. Maybe they're benchmarking a different part of the game. I was using the built-in benchmark. I'm not sure how they do it, uh, but it could just be, like I said, driver updates and things like that. Now, notice that every game I tested was better using smart access memory. One reason I wanted to bring up this slide was to show you that in, in their testing, now this was a year ago, maybe things have gotten better, they did find some games that actually lost performance. Although nothing was too crazy, 7% seemed to be the, the worst. Um, but I wanted to bring this up just so you know, like, maybe, like, uh, my personal preference, I think, is going to be to click that smart access memory button and just leave it enabled by default. It seems to overall have helped every game that I tested, but if I do find myself struggling in a game, I might try turning it off just to see if maybe it was actually negatively impacting my performance, like in Apex Legends, apparently it does, or at least it did a year ago. I don't know if that's been updated. Um, I'd like to follow this up maybe with my RX 6600, but this kind of video took way more of my free time than I'm used to spending. <laughs> um, this hobby, like I said, this channel is still kind of a hobby. I'm doing my free time. I'm not doing this full time. Uh, so we'll see. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it and have an excellent day.